Okay, hello everyone. So in today's class, we're going to uh, put this axe we uh, made previously into uh, ZBrush and we're going to uh, add some details and also learn some new tricks in ZBrush uh, that we'll use um, later on in our progress. Okay, so first of all, we need to import it into ZBrush. We're gonna select all, uh, all the parts of the axe we're going to go to the file menu up in the left corner and we're going to click export selection. We never click export all, always go for export selection. A window is going to pop up and we're going to export our file into the directory. I'm now going to export it to desktop myself. Okay, so now uh, that it's exported from Maya, we need to go to ZBrush and import it there. So I'm go gonna go to ZBrush and in the top right corner, there is an import button under the tool menu uh, that we can click and it will open a little uh, window as well. And this window is for file selection. So we're gonna find our file for the X and import it by clicking the open button and this little window that appears it's uh, we're always gonna click ok and now it's imported there's nothing on the scene because uh, we need to drag on the scene but at, as you can see when we drag it's uh, the the axis here just like in my I'm gonna click edit uh, on the top left and we're going to change the material to gray. We don't need to click make polymesh 3D. I'm going to set my scene to range zero and the resolution is fine. So we don't need to touch that. Okay, continuing on. Uh, now we're going to add some details. But uh, as you can see, um, we have uh, little polygons on the X. So we need to click divide that's on uh, under the geometry tab. So divide a couple of times and now we can use um, brushes and maybe even um, and add some details. We can add uh, a lot of geometry. I have million, uh, a million points on uh, the axe blade and about 500,000 on the handle. We're also going to uh, add divisions to these little parts like so, so we're going to hit divide a couple of times. Okay, also on this little uh, poll we forgot, so add divisions to everything, uh, to every part of the X, so we can start in detailing it. First of all, I'm going to uh, choose one of these orb brushes that I'm going to send you with uh, on, the, uh, on the class. And we can start by dragging uh, the orb brushes and as you can see the details uh, start showing up. So the, these are big uh, battle scratches that we can use. We can manipulate uh, size of the brush so we can uh, make the details more or less uh, sharp. So smaller details will appear more sharp and bigger ones will uh, smooth into the mesh a bit more. Try not to use the same brush uh, with the same size uh, too much because it will start and repeating itself. I'm gonna go to another brush this one uh, makes uh, more finer scratches and we're going to make a little more finer details on the brush with this, this tool. Try and find a little um, uh, somewhat a linear path to the brushes. So basically, as you can see, uh, I'm drawing on the X uh, regarding uh, direction, so they are uh, more dynamic, the direction is more dynamic.
okay that is just fine we can add some more if we want to we're gonna go to the other side and add some details there also I'm gonna change brushes so change brushes uh, on some periods of time so there are uh, variations to the mesh now I'm gonna add uh, hammered metal like so I'm gonna try some other brushes for bigger details so you can explore these brushes as you choose and find the best ones for you can flatten it a bit but not too much so the details don't go away but it's a nice uh, flatten for uh, hard surface meshes going back to this brush I like it very much so we can add some things Okay, we're moving on to the pole or the handle. So we can make uh, the same uh, details here. We can make it more wooden, I guess. So um, uh, we can solo mode it uh, firstly, so we can uh, see it more clearly. The solo mode button again is on the bottom right corner. I'm gonna go to orb slash and start making some uh, some indents or slashes we're gonna make some fine slashes and some bigger as well okay now as you can see there is a little indent from the scratch so it goes to the other side when we make a small scratch it doesn't happen but when we make a bigger one it replicates on the other side that's because uh, of something that's called back face mask uh, basically if the uh, mesh is too thin uh, it will reproject on the other side whichever brush will reproject on the other side uh, we can turn this uh, back face mask on so this uh, problem doesn't uh, happen uh, it's an easy fix basically it's just one button um, I'm gonna go control Z so we okay so the pole is smooth again and uh, we can go to the uh, top menu um, above so but this function works with every brush so basically if i change to clay buildup i need to activate it again and if i change to any other brush i need to activate it every time so again we'll go to the upper left corner to brush then to auto masking and there's a button back face mask when i click it as you can see uh, there is no um, reprojection on the other side no matter how big the slash is okay i'm gonna continue making details so we're making a couple of slashes on this pole and we're gonna start and using uh, brushes more brushes so it's more dynamic i'm gonna start laying these down vertically so it has a nice texture
and up here as well. I'm going to go through a couple of brushes here. So this is clay tubes. This is nice for making what uh, what meshes, particularly stylized wood meshes. Okay, so uh, now above all of this detail, I'm going to add some wraps, like uh, little cloth wraps around the handle. Uh, we're going to do that with a function called extract uh, and with a mask. So basically I'm gonna hold control and click on the mask brush and go to mask lasso. So on the mask brush and mask lasso. Mask lasso works the same as a mask, but instead of a pen, it's a lasso tool. So I'm just going to make a little mask here, something like this diagonally. And I'm going to go to the subtle menu. And I'm going to go to the bottom to extract. So at the very bottom, there's a menu called extract. I'm going to click it and uh, here we can see a thickness. And uh, if I click extract, it will extract a little part of the mesh. So basically the thickness is how thick the mesh is, but as you can see, uh, if I move, the wrap will be gone. That's why it's a preview. So I have to click accept to make it stay permanently. So when I click accept, there uh, is another subtool created and I can work on this. So basically I can now dyno mesh this like so, maybe on a higher resolution and I can smooth it up a bit and just make it a bit more um, longer. Thank you. I can go with clay buildup and uh, make some details when BDS, so them standard. I can smooth it and make some wrapping details. Also, you can use the standard brush, it's nice for cloth, so basically with uh, regular standard or alt standard, so inversed, you can make some cloth details. I'm gonna just adjust it with move, with move brush and we're good to go on the wrap. I can now adjust it a bit in the scale. And we can make some more wraps after this. Like so. I just need to um, press the pole and remove the old mask. So while it's masked again, I can go to extract and um, hit accept. Uh, I can play a bit with the thickness, so I can make it, let's say, less thick. Like so. And click accept. Now there is a new wrap under the first one. I'm going to use uh, the gizmo and the middle uh, middle axis with control to uh, inflate it a bit. And dynamish it also. I'm going to rearrange these wraps so they don't uh, clip one another and adjust it with the move tool.
Okay, some details. So we have a wrap. I'm going to do some more on the bottom. So I'm just going to mask like uh, the regular uh, wraps, but I'm going to make a little hole. So I'm going to unmask by using Alt. So it's kind of ripped in the middle. And I'm going to extract it. Okay, as you can see, there is somewhat uh, a thickness, but we can change that. But also, if um, you can see, there are other wraps because uh, the mask is still on uh, from the upper wraps. So you uh, always need to unmask or uh, delete the mask after you make wraps so it doesn't extract twice. Accept, okay. It's a bit thin, so we can uh, inflate it again with control and the middle axis on the gizmo. And we can dynamish it. And smooth it up. We're adding details again, just like the other ones. So as you can see, I'm just using the standard brush. Okay, one more wrap, just for the end with the same techniques. Okay, after uh, the wraps and the details on the X, it just uh, left to um, color the X. We're gonna color with Vertex Paint, um, which is a simpler way of coloring without using UVs. Uh, basically, uh, we're gonna start with the blade and on the left side, I'm gonna change, let's say a color. And we can see uh, that every time I change the color the whole X changes colors so we need to set the color to just one so I'm gonna set it to uh, gray for now and I'm going to go up to the left corner to color and we're gonna click the fill object button but before we do that we must check if the RGB button is activated if it's not it's not gonna lock the color so I'm gonna click it and go back to color and to fill object. If I now click it, the color gray is locked to the X or the selected subtool in this case, but the material isn't. So if I change material, you can see the material will change automatically, but um, we're gonna check out how we can lock the material too as well later on. So now if I change color, you can see everything else changes except the X blade. So um, we're uh, we're gonna go and change the colors of the rest of the items. So I'm gonna go to solo mode, like so, and go to somewhat a, um, let's say brownish uh, color for the uh, wooden handle, and I'm going to go to fill object. So remember, RGB is on. Um, okay, so if you can see the problem, it's this little gray spot here. So uh, why does that happen? So if we go, Control Z back in history, we can see that that spot was masked. 
so any masked part doesn't get affected by the fill object color uh, so masks work also with color so I'm gonna remove the mask uh, now and I'm going to fill the object again with the same brown color so color and fill object okay I'm gonna uh, do the same for the rest of the pieces so I'm gonna do these wraps uh, some red uh, shade something like this and I'm going to go to color and fill object I'm going to do uh, the same to all of them because they are separate subtools okay so now they are red okay uh, it only leaves us with these two parts uh, that are on the top and the bottom so I'm gonna select them and make them somewhat a, a darker color color and fill object and also the bottom one so you have to do them separately Okay, so when we got the color sorted, we're gonna check out the material next. So we need to make this uh, blade more shinier. So uh, we need to make it shinier or uh, uh, set up a silver, some sort of silver shader. So we're gonna check out all the shaders in the material uh, button and we can go to metal. So all the uh, pieces change to a metal shader, but we only need the X to change. So, uh, it's the same um, button like uh, the color, but this time, um, instead of RGB, we're gonna click on the M. So, we'll click on the M for material next to the RGB and we'll click uh, fill color, fill object in the color menu. So, now, as you can see, the um, X is changed, but the rest of the pieces are not. Next, we're gonna find some sort of uh, shader for the pole. Or the handle let's check this out um, what kind of shaders there are so you can preview them by hovering over the shader and you can see how they look Okay, I think the basic material is fine for this one, so I'm just gonna leave it there and go fill color on that one. For the wraps, I'm gonna find maybe something else. Let's see. Okay. So you need to check them for uh, what, uh, what preferences you like. So this is a bit more shiny, so bright and I need something more matte uh, we can use matte cap gray uh, it's simple to uh, it's similar to basic and we can fill the object again so uh, remember it's color fill object but with the little M button activated instead instead of the RGB button Okay, the one, uh, the pieces that are left are the top and bottom little pieces. So I'm going to change the material for them and just fill in the uh, color or the material in this case. Uh, let's see what suits them best. Yeah, we can go with green metallic and just go color and fill for both of them. Remember. Okay, and we have our materials set for the X. Okay, next I'm going to try and paint it a bit. So uh, I'm going to paint some details in. Um, for that, I'm going to use the paintbrush. So B P A. Uh, the paintbrush is a regular brush, but with uh, without any add, uh, it doesn't add or subtract anything. It just adds color. So it's only uh, the RGB button that's activated on the top. Okay. I can choose a little darker um, color and I can start painting in the little cracks on the wooden staff. Okay, so we can paint in some details and uh, those are gonna add some varieties to 
да. Wooden Fall. So, other than this way of painting uh, meshes, we can also use alphas. Alphas are black and white images that we can use uh, for making patterns on the uh, meshes. So basically, if I go on the left side to alpha right now and choose an alpha, let's say these dots, and I can start and painting with, let's say, a bigger brush. And as you can see, dots start to appear uh, with the paintbrush. So it's not a regular paintbrush, but a paintbrush with dots this time. You can use uh, other alphas, you can try them out. Let's say this one. It's similar to the dots, but uh, you can change up uh, a lot of them. Uh, we can use this one to paint in the um, little corners, like so. You can also add uh, your own uh, alpha, so images on the import button, and you can use them like any other. Um, you can use alphas not just with the paintbrush, but with other uh, brushes. Let's say the standard brush, we can use the circle alpha and we can put on the drag. So we drag it, uh, not draw it. And as you can see with the drag and the circle, we have um, circles forming. Uh, we can turn off the M so it doesn't look uh, uh, so shiny. And as you can see, there are circles. I can also make a little division so I can divide once more on the divide button and uh, the circles are way more cleaner because we have more geometry. Like so. And we can add some more alpha details. Alphas work with uh, the alt function as well, so uh, they work inverse, inverse as well, as you can see here. So this is inverse and this is the standard brush. I can use this one, but I don't like it here, so I can maybe put it down here at the bottom of the staff. And now we have some alpha details on the on the X. We can play around a bit more with these alphas. I can adjust this, uh, the intensity and we have some details on the pole. Okay, so not only we can paint with uh, the paintbrush and with alphas, we can also paint using the cavities. So cavities are, are little dents in the uh, mesh, so we can use them for painting. I'm gonna go to the masking menu on the right and uh, we can hit mask uh, by cavity, the little uh, sub menu. We can open it and we can hit mask by cavity. Uh, as you can see, nothing happens because the intensity is small. We can go up to 100. And when we hit it again, you can see all the cavities, all the little dents are, uh, are masked up. So we can control click on the side so we can uh, uh, inverse the mask. And now we can go to a little more darker color and um, we can go to the color menu above with RGB uh, activated and we can hit uh, fill object. Now the X is uh, tinted with a bit of gray, uh, so we can um, use that gray and smooth it up a bit so it's not that harsh. Uh, we can smooth it up really easy, ZBrush has a, a really easy uh, smudge technique, it's with the smooth brush. But if we don't want uh, the details to go, so if we don't want to lose the details while smoothing, we just have to go to the upper menu while holding shift and deactivate the Z add button. So only the RGB button is activated. And as you can see, uh, the color is smoothed out, but the, detail stay, uh, the details stay the same, the same. So this is a really effective way of um, smoothing up the, the colors. I'm going to do the same with the, um, with the wraps, so I'm going to go to a little darker uh, red, 
uh, and I'm going to fill the object but with an uh, inverse mask and smooth it up so we can have a little bit like a shadow to them added. I'm going to repeat the same process to every uh, rep and it's uh, we're going to have the same result of those shadows. Okay, so I'm going to do the same to the blade, just mask by cavity with 100 activated on dark and I'm just going to smooth the uh, black colors a bit. And we're ready for a render.